Public Q and A presence ask Reddit question, would IS a fate worse than death? Everything leading up to dying in the ICU. Families of 85 plus year olds with multiple comorbidities force us to keep doing everything to keep people alive far beyond any chance of recovering with any quality of life or dignity. Ever done CPR on a frail old body that weighs 95 pounds? The feeling of the cartilage and ribs crushing under your hands is something we never forget. After a few rounds of compressions, you can see a very obvious cavity in the chest that we have smashed into oblivion. And all for what? So the person can die in misery. Often, these people have written do not resuscitate and do not intubate requests, but the family can override these once the patient is unable to participate in the conversation. Then we get people 85 plus years old with catastrophic strokes. Family decides to do everything, so the patient ends up with a trach hole in the neck on a ventilator breathing machine, a peg tube in the stomach for liquid tube feeding, and resigned to bed rest for the remaining miserable months of their life. They will probably ultimately die of a steady but slow weight loss, horrible infected wounds from prolonged immobility, I have seen bed sores down to the bone and large enough to fit my fist into, or infection like pneumonia. All for what? Then you get the younger ones, but the ones who are far past any sense of recovery. Some of the worst to watch are people with liver failure from alcohol abuse. They go through severe and difficult to manage alcohol withdrawal, in which they are confused, combative, and hallucinating. They are often sedated to the best of our ability and restrained for their own safety. Then come the bleeding problems associated with liver failure. I have seen someone go from talking to me and laughing to dying by vomiting all of the blood from their body due to esophageal varices, bleeding arteries in the throat or stomach. It looked like a murder scene, and that the patient was awake and aware she was dying as she bled out in front of us. So if you talk to anybody who works in critical care, they will often have many examples of things worse than death. We essentially torture people every day. We see that slow, inevitable spiral down. We try our best to be realistic with patients and families, but it often doesn't work. This needs to be at the top. My father was a trauma nurse and stepmother is a neonatal practitioner. The fact that they can both deal with their job for as long as they have and still come be home and be even partially civilized astounds me. I will support critical care nurses until I have no breath left, y'all are fucking amazing. My grandmother was in that first group, my entire family wanted the whole do everything and they were ready to put her through hell, but my mother and I, who were the ones taking care of her opposed the entire family and managed to make the legal decision to let her go peacefully, painless and calm in the comfort of her own bedroom. We don't regret it, we were afraid of something like you described, sometimes I felt guilt and had second doubts, but after reading your experience I actually feel so much better, thank you for the peace of mind I didn't even know I needed, thank you so much. Being burned alive. I saw a guy that was playing with gasoline get burned alive. The smell and sounds that he made were something I will never forget. Luckily it only lasted him a few minutes before he passed out. But the next 10 years and hundreds of surgeries were terrible. He said many times we should have let him die. My grandpa was driving a truck carrying gas. Some kid blew a stop sign, hit him, and lit him in fire. He jumped out, pulled the kid to safety, then ran to the nearest house in a rural area. He had severe burns over 80% of his body and lost some fingers, ear, and a hand. This was a long time ago. Apparently his treatment consisted of having the gauze peeled off every day and replaced, and some kind of cleaning it, I think a sponge bath or something like that. My mom said that it broke him mentally, and he was an entirely different person afterward, he lost a good amount of his sanity. My sister got burnt with an hot water bottle that have split. Still nowadays, treatment for this kind of burns is to change the gauze almost every day during several months, and to scrub the skin to force renewal of the skin. This is seriously a tough treatment. Don't get burnt. Never play with gas. Trash any hot water bottle you have. Jesus, that sounds horrific. 
I imagine she was given a significant amount of morphine, right? I think I'd prefer being in an induced coma, but I don't know if they'd let you do that. If you're burned bad enough you lose the nerve endings so you don't feel pain. But sometimes it just absolutely fucks your nerve endings so that pain, intense pain, is the only thing you can feel on your skin. This was in a firefight at a checkpoint on the border of Iraq and Syria, pinned down. A civilian vehicle caught in the crossfire panicked and drove off a small bridge and hit some rocks only about 15 feet from our position. That small fall started a fire and he couldn't get out. The smell, the screams, mostly in Farsi, but toward the end he was pleading for help in English. We made eye contact a few times. We were under heavy fire though and this guy was out in the open. Rescue wasn't really an option. For a second I aimed my gun at him, and my squad leader, was like don't even think about it. Focus on return fire. Eventually we left that position, and went around on a wide flanking maneuver to eliminate the shooters. Couple hours later though we went back and the car and the guy were burnt to shit. Still regret not taking the shot. War is fucking stupid. Edit. Whoa this blew up. Thanks for all the support and awards and well wishes. You aren't responsible you didn't do anything wrong, and I don't blame you for wanting to take that shot, I know I would have wanted to do the same in your position. Just end the misery for the guy knowing there was fuck all else you could do. I agree, and pissed you had to follow the order not to do what was best for that man. I am sorry you are haunted by this and I hope you can one day let that go because you didn't cause his crash. You did your job, and you are not at fault in any way. War is no joke and decisions nobody should have to make are made in a split second. I send a huge hug one vet to another. Just know this was not and never will be your fault. Sorry if I am not wording things quite right, I hope what I am trying to say comes across the way I mean it and makes you feel better not worse. I would never intentionally do or say anything to cause more harm to anyone much less those who have lived and seen things most are totally ignorant to and thankfully so. He said many times we should have let him die. I am sorry. I know witnessing something like that is haunting. I have been witness in an accident as well and even if I am not the one that got hurt I still have restless nights over it. Don't know how to stomach it also because it seems that I am making their accident my issue when they're the ones that got hurt so I feel that I am not allowed to feel affected by it. It's traumatic for you, too. When my mom passed, people would complain about something smaller and would turn to me and apologize because their issues aren't nearly as bad as mine. I tell them that my pain doesn't mean they can't vent about their negative experiences. My pain does not invalidate their struggles, just because that person had it worse doesn't mean you didn't experience the trauma too. Their pain doesn't invalidate yours. Locked-in syndrome Absolutely. I am a healthcare worker right now and have seen it a handful of times. The patient looks at you and you can tell that they're in there. But they're unable to walk, talk, eat, scratch their own ass, nothing. I remember it from a lecture in my neuro class like 8 years ago, and never forgot it because it sounded so horrible. This, so much this. I have worked in ICU and Latach and honestly the worst thing is forcing someone to continue to live past any point of meaningful recovery, when they will be vent dependent, bed bound, immobile, living in nursing homes for the rest of their lives without any quality of life. As a teen, my mother worked in nursing homes. I met a girl maybe 25 with some neuro issue. Stayed in a fetal position all the time, had to be restrained because she would pull out her feeding tube. Mom had me brushing her hair one day, and I was chatting with her asking yes and no questions because she could only nod or shake with a frown or smile. Through these questions I discovered she hated her existence and pulls the feeding tube so she can die and end her situation. I straight up asked her if she really wanted to die, and I only received a huge nodding and big smile. I was so shook I couldn't go there anymore and still have an issue with empathy today due to shutting down so hard. 
This honestly gave me chills. It's so sad that this is the reality for that poor girl, and so many other people. I have had so many patients who were vent dependent who needed to be restrained, because they would pull at their tracks and pegs, and I would hear that the patient is confused, but if you talk to the patient there were quite a few who were actually oriented and just didn't want to live like that. It's honestly so sad. This is why we need to get over the assisted suicide stigma. I think we've progressed from before but if a person chooses to do this they should be able to. It's selfish to allow a person to live so painfully just because it's uncomfortable to some people. Yeah, I have seen that, too. I have made sure my family knows that if they do that shit to me then I will haunt the fuck out of them when I die. There's a character in the Ender's Game sequels who experiences this. The chapters from his point of view are so frustrating and terrifying. Ender's fate is equally disturbing. Edit. Now come on I am not going to spoil it. If you don't have the patience to read the books, just read the synopsis on Wikipedia. Web address. Or even worse, locked in syndrome, whilst being in excruciating pain. Web address. Here's a blog post from someone that survived it, what he went through is fascinating and terrifying. The whole blog is super interesting, his recovery is such a great story. That is fate worse than death. I would really rather die than that. Luckily 90% die during the first four months of onset, so they don't have to endure for long. I bet those four months feel like an eternity though. It's Morse code. Later. What's he saying? He says, kill me. Over and over again. Johnny got his gun. Locked in syndrome. You're conscious but unable to move or communicate with the outside world. That seems like it would really suck. I remember an episode of House with this, and they hooked him up to a machine with a mouse that could go up or down. He was told if he thought up hard enough, the machine would pick up those brain patterns and respond accordingly. It was really cool, but I don't know how realistic. Well, Stephen Hawking controlled his computer with his eyes, and there is research in the area of interpreting brainwaves, but this isn't yet widely available or affordable. Being the only survivor, you carry the guilt of not being able to save everyone. There's a girl who survived a high school shooting, only to then kill herself out of guilt. Survivor's guilt, I believe it's called. Being the middle piece in the human centipede. Being any piece in the human centipede. Well the first person is just getting rimmed. And getting vomit smothered over their asshole if the other person throws up which is highly likely. At least it's going to be cleaned up by that same person though. Listen, I know you're hating life back there, but whatever you're doing feels amazing and please keep going. Going to buy some bleach for my eyes. Do you need something? Yeah, I'll take a melon baller. I think only the first person has it any better than any other person in the chain. And really it's slightly better to be in the middle compared to the last because the last person never even has the chance of feeling a tongue on their anus. Well a much lower chance. I guess the whole centipede thing isn't sustainable in the longer term, just nutritionally speaking anyway. It has never occurred to me that nutrition was the issue until now. There are numerous issues. You cannot sew an asshole to a mouth and expect the stitches to hold and expect the stitches to not get infected. Don't ask me. Sister Winifred threw me out of sewing class. That and hydration. Where are you going to get a cold, refreshing sip from? That's where the laxatives come in, my friend. Ah uh, yes, the forbidden coffee. Jesus. 
the last person never even has the chance of feeling a tongue on their ass. Seriously, I just had an asthma attack reading this. Well to be fair there is still a chance. Nothing is stopping someone else from licking it. You're a glass half full person aren't you? Looks like you have the wrong fetishes. Sticks and stones man. May break your bones. But words leave devastating emotional scars that never heal. Being forced to live in a vegetized state on life support because your friends or family won't let you go. My siblings and I watched our grandmother live through Alzheimer's. None of us ever want to go through that, we all have an agreement, one way or another, if we are unable to care for ourselves, please give us our dignity and end it quickly, mutually we agree we don't want to have each other go through that. In so sorry you, your siblings, and your grandmother had to go through that. Just to be safe, you should all put it in. Being the child in a child sex trafficking situation. Wish all these people die painful deaths. Dude you're in the right thread to find some worse punishments than death, don't let them win with a painful death. We put them in a white room with a mirror and high-powered lights on 24 to 7, cause them locked in syndrome, light them on fire, make them the middle piece of a human centipede, and separating you from all the living things and putting you into a confined room with a giant mirror and the lights on full brightness 24 or 7. I missed 10 seconds ago when I haven't read this comment yet. That would be a terrible fate. I suppose after you will lose your sanity and start interacting with your mirror image as if it was another person. If you look at yourself in the mirrors for too long your mind will start to have hallucinations. Fatal Familial Insomnia Am I going to regret clicking the link? Nope. It's actually quite interesting, worth a read. I read fetal familial insomnia. I didn't understand how. No thank you. Just a heads up, it's a genetic disease. So for anyone who ends up having this keeping them up at night, just know that it's genetic, and unless it's common in your family it's unlikely you'll have it. But it has to start with somebody for it to be passed down genetically, right? Who's to say it won't be me? Has a mild panic attack. Now you have something to think about when you can't sleep for days so that's good right? Being skinned alive. Edit. Who the fuck gave this a wholesome award? And then put in a bag of salt and vinegar crisps. It would have to be a big bag. Even bigger than the family fun size. Family fun size. This sounds so wrong what the fuck. Unless it was a baby. You sick fuck. I like you. Pro tip. Do it in a warm room because the person will freeze to death before they're fully skinned. Taking notes is this going to be on the test? Having to deal with the pain of radiation for a long period of time. Hisashi Aoki yes, that's his last name is an example of this. He had to deal with the pain after being exposed to a fatal dose of radiation after a nuclear power plant accident. He was kept alive for 83 days after the accident. God, I can't imagine the pain he had to endure. Severe radiation poisoning is the worst. The radiation kills a bunch of your cells and makes a bunch more unable to replicate. You'll start by feeling tired, nauseous, etc. If you didn't receive an instantly fatal dose, your body will try to repair and clean up the damage but it can't. After a few days to a week, all the dead cells that are trapped by your still living skin start to fall off because the skin is starting to turn over as it does usually. 
There's no new cells to replace the dead ones though, so skin starts falling off in chunks and strips. You're in pain because it will feel like someone flayed you, not to mention that something similar is happening to all your organs at the same time. Basically, imagine walking around and then suddenly bam. You're dead but you don't know it yet. Your body is abruptly composed of 10% dead and going to be necrotic tissue. Radiation is a worse death than dying by fire, which was previously the worst of fake. Post-Nuclear War LPT If you shit blood after full-body radiation exposure, there is 0% hope for rescue, even with Star Trek-level tech. The blood shitting is a sign your GI system is going to collapse. There is no reversing that, let alone all the other horrible stuff that's about to happen to you. So if you ever see that, just lock yourself in a garage with a car and make it quick and painless. Otherwise, it can take a few to a couple weeks. Trust me, you won't want to be around for most of it. If on the other hand, you just have nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea but no bloody stools, then you might survive. But chances are you all need a bone marrow transplant, because if you're feeling that bad after full body exposure then your blood generating stem cells are probably shot. So unless you've got a chance to get a transplant, then you should also probably consider an exit strategy as well. And if you get a strong metallic taste in the context of radiation exposure, there's a decent chance you're dead and don't know it yet. Yeah radiation is horrifying as soon as you consider its harshest effect is on the fastest replicating cells, and that skin, intestine, blood and mucous membrane cells are some of the fastest replicating, and the consequence of not having them anymore. Ours acute radiation syndrome kills the ability of your cells to replicate. Your organs basically rot. And painkillers no longer work because there are no more receptors to accommodate such medicine. So you just wait. And rot. He died multiple times, daily. He begged to die, but the doctors didn't let him. His skin was falling off, and he was a mere shell of a human. So much more stuff happened to him that I don't remember off the top of my head. I feel so bad for him. I hope he's at peace now. Those doctors we sued by his family I think. Although his fate was horrible and the doctors were cruel, his death did help us learn a lot about radiation deaths and helped us in the long run. I just feel bad that it required the life of an innocent man. Or. I know, that's what I hate about all the things we know about the human body. The majority of reasons why we know these things is because of the suffering of others. I think that having a child disappear and never knowing what happened is likely the worst thing in the world. Holding out hope. Never knowing when it is appropriate to stop looking. Even when your despair seems too much to bear for even one more day, you know that killing yourself would end any possibility of being reunited. Edit. Definitely the post with the most despair quotient that I have received gold for, but thank you. Well that's it for Reddit today. Going to go hug my kid. I wish I have my own kid to hug right now. Just steal one. Make sure the parents don't know what happened though. Well now, that sure took a turn. That went exactly how the human mind works. S. Mort. My friends had their only child a 16-year-old daughter disappear while she was visiting family in another country. They didn't realize she was missing for a few days as she was traveling from town to town to surprise another portion of their family. They finally found her body five years later under a tree in a field. His wife died quite young, many think it was from a broken heart. What country was she visiting? Did they find out who killed her? She was traveling alone. Yep. I was going to say outliving your child. Outliving your child is horrific. I used to work in a senior center and one of our residents was an old Baptist pastor with the kindest demeanor. He had three sons and one daughter. The daughter died in her fifties of cancer. 
All three sons served in Vietnam one died in combat, another took his life, and another died of cancer due to Agent Orange. After he told me all this, I an agnostic myself asked him how he has been so faithful. He just said if I didn't have a reason to believe this would all make sense someday, I would just fall apart. That just straight ripped me into pieces. Edit. Thanks for the award. Bella Detesta Matribus. It's Latin for Mothers Hate Wars. Having lost a brother, I can just say that although it hit mom the hardest, my dad just never gave up grieving. My mother is okay, some days. But dad. He didn't break, just a hairline crack that doesn't go away. And I hate it. Hate going home with some good news and seeing them smile that half-vacant smile. As if they were wishing it were him standing there. As if half of them, half of us, half of this family is already dead. We became half people the day he left us. Dad was our rock. Still is. But some days, when it gets too much, I can just feel him screaming silently into the void, asking God why. Why not him? Bella detesta matribus, indeed. But fathers don't forget. What's worse, if you kill your child but don't mean to, like fall asleep while them in the bed and roll on them, or accidentally tripping and splat. Or like I recently saw on house where a lady went fucking crazy or some shit and strangled her child because of the voices in her head, but when she was cured and found out the baby died she was bawling and shit. This this would be worse than a missing kid. I remember being warned and warned about co-sleeping and napping with a newborn. And just being careful of sleeping around a baby in general. Apparently one of the nurses had lost her baby while breastfeeding in a rocking chair during one of the middle of the night feedings. Something that should have been safe. She was so exhausted she fell asleep, the baby slipped into the space between her and the chair and suffocated. The loss of a child is horrific, to have it be your fault is worse. My great uncle disappeared at 22. I think it was in the 1950s no one ever knew what happened, they never found a trace of him. It's kind of a taboo topic in my family but my great grandmother never really recovered and from what I have heard, it had big impact on my family. So yeah having a child disappear can break people's lives. I lost a child at the age of 3 months. Still the worst thing. Seeing everyone close to you die. It makes you wish you died with them. Being paralyzed and blind for your whole life. My mom was paralyzed on her right side. She lost her voice too. It was too close for a few days. But she is okay now, can speak too, though still has difficulty speaking fluently. Her right hand still doesn't work properly but no one could tell if they met her for the first time. She's basically an one-armed ninja. I am sorry to hear that but glad she is doing better. There's a good non-fiction book about this idea called The Butterfly and the Diving Bell. A French journalist in normal health with a normal life was unexpectedly afflicted by a rare disease called locked-in syndrome. It's essentially complete paralysis, he was no longer able to speak, walk, move his arms, legs, or any of his muscles. But he still had complete control over his mental faculties. Basically locked into a useless body, but completely conscious of the horror of his new reality. He transcribed the entire book to a typist by blinking to communicate letters and words. Very sad and interesting read. There was a post on here recently of a guy with the same condition, and the caretakers played Barney on Endless Loop. Grimacing face. Edit could not find the post, but here is a news article. Web address. Yes I have heard many stories of people in a coma, who were badly treated, and had to endure kids' films on repeat, and treated like nobodies. Why would anyone be awful enough person to play Barney on loop for anyone or anything, even a child? Fucking savages. This is what the song won by Metallica is about. A war vet who is trapped inside his useless body. Yeah I was 8 when that video came out, and when I saw it, 
and heard the story it literally gave me nightmares for a substantial amount of time, especially since the music was so intense. Darkness imprisoning me all that I see absolute horror. Hope that gives you nightmares. Based off the book or movie Johnny Got His Gun. Read up on Junko Furuta. I wish I never learned about that story, I never wanted to believe anyone could be this atrocious IRL. But if you suffer from the burden of learning about that story try to feel kindness toward this deceased girl, and admiration of her courage, until the very end. That's what I tried anyway. Yep or Kelly and Bates or Sylvia Likens, all three of them young sweet girls that were tortured in ways that are unimaginable. But Junko has to be the worst, don't know where they came up with some of the things that they did to her. And if I remember they are all out of prison already I think. I still haven't read about Junko Furuta yet. Usually things of this nature do not bother me, but I have heard so many people say the story is so intensely disturbing that it shouldn't be read. Keep it that way. Don't be like me and look up things people say not to. This is an actual genuine warning. It has made me lose my appetite many times and lash out in anger over it. It will affect you. Don't fucking do it. It's not worth it. I got to recommend that you don't read it. It's truly awful. One of the earliest things I read on the internet, and it still remains one of the most disturbing ones. Terrifying to imagine such evil was upon her. If I am not mistaken her torturers or murderers are free and still alive now. They all got absurdly light sentences because they came from wealthy families with strong connections to the media and organized crime syndicates. That's probably the same reason why no one really tried seriously to help rescue Junko even though dozens of people knew she was being held captive for weeks and horribly abused. Jesus, that was awful. That would be the worst. You found the worst. OMG. Poor soul, I almost cried reading about this. I haven't read this in probably eight years, but so much of it has stuck with me this whole time. What a horrible read. Guys, don't look it up if you don't want that burden. Torture or slavery for about 80 years. Along with public humiliation and shame for your family. Eternity in a box like an interview with a vampire. Basically, being immortal, sealed in a box, stood on your head, and then sealed in a wall forever. That reminds me of how Strahd dealt with that one asshole in I, Strahd. He drained his blood and let the townsfolk bury him in his tomb, which Strahd had poured over with concrete or cement, knowing that the guy would rise from the dead to go off and try to feed. Strahd sat outside the tomb, waiting for the guy to wake from his slumber, and when he did they had a conversation where basically Strahd laid it out for him. You will be hungry. Thirsty like you've never felt thirst before. But you can't get out of the crypt because you're too weak to escape. You're also too strong to die. So you will break your fingernails scratching at the walls, you will scream until your vocal cords burst, and you will go mad in the unending darkness, drinking your own blood, eating your own flesh. And none of it will ever be enough. Many years from now, you will die, alone, in darkness, mad. The guy wails in agony one last time, then goes silent, and Strahd leaves him to his fate. That would probably be a fate worse than death. Knowing it all was going to happen to you, and being utterly powerless to stop it. Reminds me of movie Old Guard where they put immortal women in coffin and sunk her to the bottom of the sea. She keeps drowning and coming back alive again over and over again for eternity. Reminds me of The Cask of Amontillado by Edgar Allan Poe. Pretty freaky stuff. Link for the curious. Web address. Being in an infinite death loop and no way of escaping. Corga Requiem de. This is Golden Experience Requiem. Wa. 
Wa. Dormemu, I have come to bargain. Diavolo intensifies. Like that guy who gets eaten by a bird every day. Prometheus. Stay the hell away from me. Locked in a room and forced to watch the view. At high volume. All day. Every day. We're on easy street. Wishing to die but not being allowed to. Edit. Wow, I did not expect this wave of responses. Thanks for the love and support guys, I truly appreciate it. Just to clarify, I am going pretty well at this point in my life. The reason why I said this is because this was something that I had been going through quite badly some time ago, and I know that we've all felt this urge in some shape or form. As much as I wanted to end things when it got too much. I knew deep in my heart that I would hurt too many people in my life, and that it's not my time to go just yet. Right now, my mindset is stable, and I have an amazing girlfriend who's my biggest support pillar and my best friend. My heart goes out to all of you who have or are feeling this sensation right now. Trust me when I say this. The bad times shall come but they are not here to last. Reach out to those you trust if you can and ride it through to the end. True Immortality Hear me out. If you were truly immortal, that is, you could never die under any circumstances, you'd outlive everyone. Even if you've got close to someone, they'd be dead and what, to you, would feel like the blink of an eye. Given enough time, I think this has a good, if not 100% chance of driving you insane. Eventually, you'd outlive the human species. When humans went extinct, you'd have no one to talk to forever. Now you would certainly go insane. Oh, and the worst part is still ahead. In trillions and trillions of years, the universe's stars will all have exhausted their supply of nuclear fuel, and the universe will reach heat death. Now there is nothing but you on a cold, inert, dead sphere. Now you get to endure this for all eternity. Sorry for the abject depression. I have a lot of thoughts regarding this. Would you really go insane? How do you even define sanity for an eternal being? Would it not be simply adapting to the reality of eternal loneliness? What are really the chances you would be the only immortal being in the universe? I would make it my mission to find every other living species, just in case. With billions of years until the death of the sun, I have plenty of time to find a way for long-distance space travel. Even if it's not particularly fast space travel, I have the time. When the universe does die, time itself will end. So what really is an eternity in the absence of time and space? Would you be aware of your own existence? How likely is it that eventually, another universe will form? In short, immortality slaps and I would give anything to experience it. The second one kind of reminds me of the immortal guy in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy who makes it his life's work to travel around the universe and insult every single living creature with enough intelligence to understand insults. Part of why immortality appeals to me so much is curiosity. I want to know everything. How other species react to being insulted I guess goes under everything so I can definitely get behind that. I would also like to pretend I wouldn't be a shameless alien fucker but we're being honest here. Honestly, immortality where you just couldn't die from natural causes old age, disease, stuff like that would be pretty neat. <coughs> Needing to POO right after you take a shower. Feels like you're dirty all over again lol. The worst. <coughs> now with COVID going around, old people who are suffering from it and fighting for their lives for two or three weeks in the hospital, knowing they aren't getting better, dying slowly without having contact with family or friends because they don't have a cell phone or etc. Suffering for weeks and eventually dying seems horrible, not only from COVID but also from cancer. Probably life in prison, just a completely pointless existence. Yeah, once you're in for life, what's the point in trying to be a good person? 
your entire life is going to be within the same concrete walls. May as well just going on a murder spree of the child molesters and rapists, or make a run for the fence in the yard. You'd be surprised, people adapt to situations. There's a reason people on death row fight to have their conviction turned, so that they could just live out their lives in prison instead. It's prison, but you can still socialize, make friends, have sex if you're willing to roll that way read books, eat food, see your family, learn about physics and the universe, write a novel, watch movies every now and again and even play video games at least in prisons in my country. As long as you're alive you can still do stuff, even if it comes with way less freedom than before. Which country? I know some common correctional facilities in the US have some cool stuff like that, but if they have all of that then prison doesn't sound half bad. Exactly it really depends where, I was going to put life in prison in North Korea, as worse than death, or for another example the penal treadmills that were used in England where the prisoners had to climb stairs all day. Yeah that's just straight up torture. I, I would think that the reason you don't do that is because you want your life in prison to be the best you can make it. Most people would rather not be in solitary confinement 23 hours a day for the rest of their lives. Assuming the person who gets life in prison is a terrible person at least. Most people also just don't want to go on murder sprees. Dropping the toast butter side down. Actually, the science behind this is that most tables or countertops are a standard size. And that size is just enough for the toast to flip once while it falls. However I can't explain why it only happens when I am in a bad mood. Maybe because when you're in a bad mood you aren't paying attention to your toast. Immortality I would dig immortality if you couldn't die from natural causes, but inability to die at all would be unimaginably brutal. You would outlast all humanity and remain alone for 5 to 7 billion years until the sun explodes, then you would spend untold billions of years floating through space. Conscious the whole time. That's if you don't get trapped inside some inescapable construct like a canyon, or volcano, or the middle of the ocean, or underground. And you're stuck there forever while every inch of your body is writhing in pain, and is unable to move. That's my only fear during immortality. So be smart and not too reckless. So eventually he stopped thinking. Wow. You are still with us. Thanks for being such a nice person. As long as you are here, why not like this video and subscribe to our channel. Also you can press the bell icon, so you won't miss any future uploads.